Hello everyone, this is Carissa again, back to our pre-launch series. So today I'll be sharing Sora. Okay, so before we start, right, um, this analysis is actually to help you if you're looking at Sora. I will be doing this full analysis from one to the five bedrooms. What are the things to look out for? Um, I think that are, these are some pointers that you probably might want to take note when it comes to buying any property or even like for Sora, what are the key five things that we want to uh, take note? So let's start. Um, okay, so Sora, the preview period will start on 22nd of June. The, the booking date is on 6th of July and it is uh, developed by Xinghai Yi and KSH Holdings. Where is Sora? Sora is actually over here. It's located in D22 along Yanqing Road. And the amazing thing about this project, right, is actually facing Lakeside Garden, Chinese Garden and Japanese Garden. So just a fun fact. Um, this is the third national garden in Singapore. So there are of course other two like botanic gardens and gardens by the bay. So I mean these other two national gardens, I think it will be hard to get any properties there. So I think it will be amazing to have such a view that is facing the gardens and of course a lake. Okay, so just let me show you a bit of the view. So this is actually the Sky Deck 360 um, Sky Deck view from the uh, development itself which is on the rooftop where you can host your guests or whoever you know have parties and still overlooking this nice beautiful garden view and the lake view okay so next location wise we are four stops to lakeside mrt station and minutes to taman jurong food center so of course we also do have a lot of transformation going on um, in Jurong itself which I will not be touching so much on it but I, I will just briefly mention we have the IPP over here and Jurong Lake District Master Developer Site um, so all these are within 10 minutes 15 minutes drive um, to all these so if let's say you're thinking of um, this as a point of investment or even rentability wise I don't foresee a huge problem so like I mentioned earlier in the video I will be touching on the analysis of the one plus study two all the way to the five bedrooms and what other things to look out for so I hope this little analysis will be able to help you to understand a bit more how you can actually uh, think of how the developer think how you can leverage on all the good points of this project um, to make some money, to get some profits, lah, decent profits. So basically, uh, there are 440 units. The amazing part about this uh, development, I personally like, is that it is a 300 meters frontage overlooking the Third National Gardens. Meaning to say, when I say 300, it means from this point to this point. Isn't it nice? Yeah, so basically, I would say that almost 78.5% of the units are actually facing the lake. So from this point itself, when a developer built it this way, means that the lake is actually the key point. So um, if we want to find a unit that is facing the lake, we also need to know which are the stacks are a bit more worth buys. Okay, so we will start from the one plus study first. Um, before we go to there, there is basically two blocks. One is 20th floor and one is 12 stories. So there is a, um, a bit of an elevation in terms of the difference in height. So like I mentioned, 78.5% is actually facing the lake and the gardens. So um, of course, this is the elevation chart. Um, we have two and three bedrooms and five bedrooms is only one stack, which I will touch on later. Okay, so let's move on. So basically, from this uh, distribution mix of the units, right, we can see that the developer actually set a lot of footholds on the two bedrooms. And uh, basically, we only have um, 18 units of 4 bedrooms and 18 units of 5 bedrooms. So, which makes the development actually very rare. And the 5 bedroom actually come with a private lift. So, I will share a bit more in details um, why is it good to have pros and cons of having a private lift. So, one plus study. So basically, one plus study, right, is basically in stack 13 and stack 28 and it's facing the HDBs. Most of the big units are actually facing the lake view. Only the smaller ones are facing the uh, Yunqing Road itself. Lah. So one plus study, it's facing the HDB. So let's look at the layout. So the layout um, is actually quite interesting. Okay, so let me show you first. So this is the layout of Sora, 36 units, uh, non-PPVC, 538 square feet. 
So the interesting thing about this layout is that I've mentioned um, the study is actually in the master bedroom itself. Okay, which means to say, um, if let's say, for example, if you want it for own stay, I think this is super ideal because I've personally seen um, it's huge. It's been a while I've seen some such big um, master bedroom available in the market. And we have a galley kitchen and you have still have your proper dining and living room space. So um, I think this is quite ideal for um, own stay. Or even if let's say we are buying for investment point of view, I have an idea. Okay, so here. So if let's say we are buying for investment, right, there is a possibility of creating it into a two bit one bath. So I'm gonna show it to you now how to do it. Okay. With the new creation, right, we can actually because the study is connected to the master and then they have a balcony, so I think it will be possible to actually create or erect another room over here and um, you still have your living room space and your dining space and if let's say it were to become a two bedroom the average renter for one even a one plus study in D22 itself we talk about late grand for example late grand the average rent is about 3.5 to 3.7 so with the new creation uh, we can actually maybe anticipate 4-2 or even 4 I think will already be higher than the rest of the neighbouring uh, projects. So I think this layout is one um, very good layout because you are buying in as a one plus study but yet there is a possibility of erecting another room and create it into a two big one bath. Supply wise, uh, which I will touch on also. So D21, of course, it will be a better location because it's the RCR, right? So D21, the, there is approximately a total of 966 units comprises of one and one plus study. Available for sale is only 102. Okay, so we might think that it's, um, I mean, it's probably about a 10 or 11%, but let's look at D22, yeah? So when we look at D22, right, D22 has an approximately of 553 five, units and of which only 93 units are 1 plus study. Okay, so and we look further, right, there is only 22 units for sale. So it's actually even lower in terms of ratio-wise. We don't talk about the numbers, but we talk about in terms of a percentage, in terms of ratio-wise, it is much lower than even for a neighbouring better location D21. Um, it is only 4% as compared to 11% in D21 because the reason is D22 has one of the highest rental yield. Okay, so that is the reason why when you have a good rental yield, a steady rental yield, there's no one that wants to sell the property. Yeah, so if you get into the market, if you are able to pick something like this or if you're looking at one plus study I think this is very good for investment and in terms of rentability it shouldn't be too much of a problem okay another thing I want to touch on is that supply in the vicinity right um, they are mostly this kind of layout which means that they have a study at the far end and then in between there's a toilet and then you have your master bedroom here and then of course is the long kitchen kind long kitchen which is a bit more narrow lah. Okay, uh, and this type of layout is a bit harder to create another room. And then, uh, like I've mentioned over here also, this is the same kind of layout, it's also in between. But whereas for us, um, we are unlike others with the one plus study at the far corner. Ours is like this. Ours is uh, study in the master bedroom, um, and then you, there's still a possibility to create another small bedroom. This is um, created by me actually. Yeah, so it's just to let you visualize, it's just to let you visualize that it's possible to actually do up like this. So it's a single bed, you still have a huge master bedroom, you still have your living, dining space. Um, it can be like a co living kind of concept. And then, of course, uh, with this kind of creation, uh, we hope to be able to fetch a higher rental yield of 4002 as compared to others of maybe 35 or even 37 we are five to seven hundred more than your neighbors okay so next thing i will talk about will be the non-harmonization okay so non-harmonization because sora is an m block site so there is no no harmonization in sora itself so this void 
or even loft area in the uh, highest floor, right, will actually be one of the rare things that won't be available in the market in the future. Lah. So if let's say you're considering uh, getting a high ceiling unit, that can be part of your consideration. But of course, we need to see, um, later I will do a comparison, whether should we go lower floor first or should we go higher floor first? Because every uh, unit types, I actually done my research, um, we should do it differently. Okay, so pricing strategy. So you for this pricing strategy, but I will be using Lake Gardens as comparison. That is the closest to us already. Um, okay, so Lake Gardens, for example, I will be taking the Lake Facing four bedroom versus the HGV Facing one plus three. Okay, I will later explain to you why I will do that. Okay, so there isn't a Lake Facing one plus three. So we have to take a biggest unit and then we versus the smallest unit to see what is the percentage difference in terms of their uh, floor level, in terms of how the developer price their PSF to actually help us better understand which one is actually more a worth buy. Okay, so in the next example, I will actually show it to you. Okay, so if you can see here, right, the 17th floor unit, one beta facing uh, HDB versus the lake facing four beta, right? Um, it's actually a marginal 0.7% of difference. And then we move down, of course, we have the mid-floor unit. It's only at about 0.8%. Okay, then we move down to the lowest floor, which is second floor. We see a 5.5%. Okay, this is what I want to show. So, which means to say, right, if the high floor HDB facing, right, is actually priced as high as the leg facing four beta, then it's not something that we should consider. We should consider uh, something that is in a bigger gap. So I think for the one beta, right, for Sora, we don't have the pricing yet. So what we can do is, uh, even when you go to the launch, right, um, I think what you can do is how we want to gauge whether is this unit is it a worth buy or not. I think this is a very good way of gauging a HGV facing versus a leg facing for beta. And then you see the percentage difference. So I have other videos that I've done that I mentioned five unit types that you can extract during the launch so that you can see the whole overall elevation chart. Uh, that video is not posted yet, so I will uh, post it soon. But okay, anyway, back to this thing. Uh, so basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to understand the developer's pricing strategy. So if let's say, if for example, if based on this, what I've analyzed, and when you go to the launch day in Sora, if let's say you were to get a leg facing versus a HGV facing and we get the high floor versus the low floor and the percentage, for example, this is 5.5, for example, not saying it's a uh, for sure, but I'm just saying for example, then of course we will go for the high floor unit because that means the high floor one beta is attractively priced. Of course, then in the future, you want to sell and everything, it will be, of course be better because it is more worth buy than uh, the mid floor, for example. The mid floor, for example, is uh, 3%. Then, of course, this one will be a better buy. So for now, what I've done and researched, Sora is based on the same kind of pricing strategy. Then, we should go from low onwards. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is the one plus study. Okay, so later in the 2 and the 3 and the 4, I will also be doing this but it will be shown uh, differently so we will need to then see again which the unit types, how we want to adopt the pricing strategy. Okay, so the recommendation is, I will recommend uh, stack 28, stack 28, yeah, uh, because there's only two stacks, ma. so stack 28 um, and lower floor, like I've mentioned, because the price gap between the HDB facing and the leg facing, it's about a 5.5% difference if they adopt the same pricing strategy. So, um, and why I choose Stack 28 is because it is a bit further away from the entrance. Yeah, so th this one uh, is, is nearer. La. So, so for sure, I will, go, I will go for something that is a bit further if we want to go for low floor. Okay, but of course, you, you can also compare it with Stack 13's low floor and see what's the price difference. Um, during the launch day if you are keen in uh, the one plus study okay so moving forward we have the two and the two plus study okay so uh, I spoke to a lot of my buyers so they mentioned uh, Sora is not so near to MRTs I also asked them this is buying a 
two bedder not near to MRT station or even a one bedder not near to MRT station a wise choice so I did a little bit of research let me show it to you does being near to MRT equals higher profit um, we will be using Alex residence and principal garden as a comparison this is in v3 so three minutes to mrt station that is alex residence three minutes walk huh? and then uh, principal garden is 17 minutes walk to mrt station of course a lot of people location wise they will think that alex residence is a better location principal gardens is 17 minutes not so good location Next, I will show you how they actually perform in the resale market. In the two-bedroom analysis, right, I've actually extracted some examples. So the two-bedder in Alex Residence actually made a profit of 248000 Three minutes walk for MRT station. Whereas for Principal Garden, they made a profit of 525000 Of course, the size is slightly bigger, but uh, in terms of profit-wise and the PSF-wise, is actually much much higher yeah so so by right if the unit is bigger the PSF should be lower right but then for this one um, the PSF is actually much higher than even compared to something that is three minutes to MRT station so how did it actually achieve this 100% more in profits for principal garden okay so I think the most important here is next, I will use this example to actually showcase why um, this has actually 110% more in terms of profit. Okay, so next will be Seaside Residence that I was talking about. So Seaside Residence, the name itself tells us that it is facing the sea. So I think the most important thing about buying into a project is to be able to understand what is the unique selling point of the project. Okay, so meaning to say, for example, for Seaside, it is P-facing. That is something that we want to go into. Okay, so we have to play to the project's good points. As for Alex, definitely is near to MRT is the selling point. For here, Principal Garden, why they are able to make a lot more is because Principal Garden is 80% communal space so only 20% are the units itself so basically when a buyer walks in right if a buyer is buying for own space a lot of buyers they also have uh, a lot of emotions when it comes to buying a property so even I myself I personally quite like principal garden I went to person principal garden I feel that you know the communal space is so huge you basically you can run from one block to another yeah and the the feel we go walking is different it's airy it's breezy so um, most of the units actually in principal garden make quite a fair bit yeah so that is the unique selling point even if it is not close to MRT but because of the project itself um, they want to sell the space, they want to sell the homestay area Buyers when they walk in, they will have the wow feeling That is what they want to sell So this is the project This is the selling point of Principal Garden So as for Seaside, it's also the same They want to sell the sea view So for Sora, we also need to understand or identify the selling point So which is definitely the lake and also the National Garden lah. Let me show you where exactly is Seaside Residence uh, 2 bedder first Okay, so for Seaside Residence 2 beta, we have Stack 3. We'll be comparing for Stack 3 and Stack 14. So definitely this is a C facing and then this is the school facing, I think. School facing. So next, I will show you how they actually perform. So yeah, school facing, correct. Uh, okay, so stack, stack 3 will be the C facing. Okay, this is school facing. So in terms of profitability wise, the C facing actually made 215k more than a higher floor unit of the school facing. So basically what I'm trying to derive here is that even the C facing was purchased 6% higher in price, purchased higher at a lower floor, but yet they actually made 215k more than a school facing unit yeah so basically because when in the resale market buyers when they come in they go in they see wow the sea versus a view that is like this which may be quite widely available uh, as compared to this that is a bit more rare 
uh, if you have been to seaside you will understand what I mean when you open the door you will see like wow the sea is just right in your face especially in D15 uh, a lot of buyers they want to be near to the sea or they want to have a sea facing definitely they will be willing to pay a little bit more this owner they actually earn 495k just by having a lower floor and sea facing for Sora we also need to understand um, if we're buying into the facing what should we take note of okay so next I will be showing the two bedroom first so basically the two bedroom there is two types of units 646 at stack 6 and 7 this is till level 12 only and the other stack which are all HDB facing units so the smaller two bedrooms are HDB facing 667 stack 20 and 21 it's uh, located on the 20 storey block um, Okay, so I will be sharing um, later what is the main difference of the layout For the 646, right, it's basically a dumbbell layout This, honestly, I think um, it is more of a for investment point of view because likely this will be a lower quantum based on the size because it's on the shorter block and uh, whereas for this uh, 667 unit, it is um, a traditional two bedroom kind of layout. And I think the main thing we need to take note is the windows. Okay, for the 667, I personally feel it's much better because the master bath comes with a window, common bath comes with a window, and most importantly, the kitchen actually has a window as well. So, which means to say, if let's say we want to enclose this part it is possible okay uh, i'm not saying that the dumbbell can't do it the dumbbell also can do it and we have a window here as well but the common bath there is no window no window okay so uh, in the future if we want to sell it um, if it's for own state buyers i think these are the points that they might want to take note of uh, but of course, this also can, you want to put a glass or whatever, you know um, You can enclose and then open up the door or even open up this kitchen uh, window You can do your heavy cooking etc Okay, so I think uh, more of the recommendation, I will show it to you How I actually derive whether is it um, suitable or whether is it worth buying in It's based on this okay so let's say for example estimated price for Sora B1 2 beta which is the smaller unit say 646 let's say based on an average of 2000 PSF we are getting ourselves into a 1.292 million so if let's say for example if the 667 is priced the same at 2000 PSF having the same facing so we are actually only paying 42,000 more only which means to say it's only a premium of 3.25% so I think anything in this range or even uh, anything below a 5% mark it is still considered um, quite reasonable so we need to first understand how much is maybe when you go to the lawn but you can understand first how much is this selling for and then of course you can get another one 667 one to understand how much premium are we paying so i think anything that is below five percent is something that we can be worth considering because in the future when you want to sell you have a wider range of buyers meaning to say because these are the things that buyer will take note of because I do resales as well, I understand uh, buyers when they come in, oh, toilet, there's no window. It's a minus point, I would say. So, and especially it's on the other side. Um, and there is only this ventilation coming from here. So, that is something that buyers might be put off by. So, meaning you say, if let's say if it's in this range, of course, it would be very ideal. But if it's anything below 5% range, I think it's, it's worth considering because buyers. If in the future you want to sell, I can sell to investor, I can sell to own state buyers. And of course, rentability wise, um, we will talk about the two bedroom versus the two plus study in Lake Grand itself. Um, the average price for the smaller units. So the 614 square feet unit, the average rent is 4,005. Whereas for the bigger unit, um, the average price is 4,007 4, so that is a $200 difference in terms of the pricing so I think um, if you can or if the price gap 
or we are paying like maybe 3.5% or 3.25%, something in this range or even less than 5 or even less than 4 I think would be uh, uh, quite reasonable, then you really can consider the bigger unit 67 in Sora itself. Whereas for the 2 plus study, it's also about 4,008. Next, I will be talking about whether is it worthwhile to buy a 2 plus study in Sora because looking at this 4,008 rent, uh, then should I just consider the 2 bedroom? So later I will share. Um, then we will also be using Caspian as an example. Caspian is uh, 12 years old. The average rent for the 2 bed and the 2 plus study is only $100 of difference. So. I think generally, uh, my recommendation is to go for the 667 square feet if it's in the 3.25% range. Next, the pricing strategy again, we will be using the 2 bedroom versus the 4 bedrooms, HDB and leg facing. So just now, in the 1 bedroom I mentioned, it will be a bit different. So just now when we compare, right, the HDB facing of the 1 plus study, versus the 4 bedder sim stack, yeah. it's 0 0.7, if I didn't remember wrongly, 0 0.8 and 5.5%. Now we look at the 2 bedder in Lake Gardens, so if Sora adopts the same pricing strategy, same thing wise, the low floor will be much, much higher in terms of the price gap. So we're talking about a 9.4%, so definitely I think if it's the same pricing strategy, you should go for something that is a, a lower floor. And then, of course, then next considerably, uh, if let's say low, low floor is gone, then maybe we can go for something that is the higher floor units. So, of course, we will have to take the comparisons again during the launch day, then we can make a better informed decision. Okay, so selection wise, we will go for something that is stack 21, again the same, because it's nearer to the entrance. This is further. And then low floor first, first choice, then followed by high floor. Mid floor, if we look at it, it's only a marginal 3.7%. So, meaning to say this is 1, then 2, then 3. If we're going for the 2 bader. So, repeat again, stack 21 is my recommendation. And we will go for something that's on the lower floor first, then high floor. Okay? Moving forward. Now, we will be going into the 2 plus study. 2 plus study. So, basically, the 2 plus study are all facing the lake. So, but of course, there are good facings of the lake and not so good facing of the lake. Meaning to say, like for example, these units over here, they are slightly blocked. And this one, this one is still not so bad, these two stacks. You can see, uh, okay. So, why I say this is slightly blocked because if you look out here, right, you will still see a little bit of this. And for here, it's also, you will see a bit of this. So, as compared to the other um, stacks, it's quite a full unblocked view of the lake and garden. So, uh, now I want to share a little bit more on the layout. I think now we can first identify which one is the good facing of the lake and then uh, not so good facing of the lake plus the layout. Then I think it will help us to better understand which unit should we go for. Okay, so next, all the 732 square feet are all 2 plus study. And again, the study is in the master bedroom itself. So both the units are the same. This is point number one. So meaning to say, I've been to the show flat, so I, I saw how the size is. Again, it's been a while since I've seen something that is so huge, where the layout, the, the master bedroom, you can actually put a king-size bed, two side tables, and you still have ample space to walk around. This is not very common in three bedrooms. Some of the newer developments, you don't see this. So I think even without the study, Okay, so the study was like this, right? So they didn't enclose off the study in the show flat itself, but um, they have this side tables, side tables, and a king size bit in there. Um, so I think the space wise, definitely, even if you want to enclose this part, you are still able to put in all this stuff in there. So I think this good thing about having a study in the master bedroom is you can actually put a glass curtain. If you require it as a study when your partner is sleeping, 
you can enclose this fully. But if you don't need it, you can open it up and fold it by the side like this. So you can cover it up fully. It will be folded and tucked into one corner of it. So if you don't need that, then it will be a huge space. But if you don't need study at all, then I think this area you can put your yoga mat, uh, massage chair. It's quite luxury in a way. And the most importantly, you have a lake view. So you just imagine yourself waking up to the lake and garden view every morning. Okay, so next thing I want to touch on is the balcony area. Although both the layouts have um, study in the master bedroom, but these two stacks, basically like I've mentioned earlier in another slide, these are slightly blocked. Slightly blocked but it's facing the lake still. These are all facing the full lake view and um, you don't have slightly blocked view. And the third thing I want to touch on is actually the aircon latch. For here, it's actually on the L shape, which is actually on the second bedroom side. Whereas for here, it is half on the second bedroom and half in the balcony. So meaning to say when you have this half over here, right? So this is a wall. Means it will be a bit darker and you will not be able to see like a full view from the living room itself. So here will definitely be a bit more blocked. Whereas for here, it's a full view. So definitely for this unit will be slightly darker. Okay, and then... Um, um, so again, we will have to go to the pricing strategy. We will take comparison from Lake Gardens, the 2 plus study, HDB facing versus the Lake facing. Because both of these units, both of them has a Lake and a non-Lake. 2 bathers, 6, 7, 8 square feet versus 2 plus study, 7, 7, 5 square feet lake facing, HDB facing. Now, this one has a little bit of difference. Meaning to say that just now when we see the 1 plus study and the 2 bedroom, the margin should be as wide as possible. But for here, if it's the HDB facing versus the lake facing, if we talk about the high floor unit, the margin has to be as low as possible. That means if Sora were to adopt the same pricing strategy, then we can buy a high floor leg facing because it is comparable to the HDB facings to beta uh, PSF. So now we look at it, uh, HDB facing versus the leg facing, it is a marginal 0.35%. Comparing to the lower floor, which is a 4.67%, 0204 versus 0208, um, it is 4.67%. So meaning to say that if it's the same pricing strategy, then I will go for something that is in the higher floor. Means the higher floor leg facing is very attractively priced as compared to the lower floor one and of course the HDB facing. If given the almost the same PSF, I will go for something that is on the higher floor. So selection-wise, I will go for stack 2 and stack 11. Okay, So these are the ones that are slightly blocked and then the layout that is not so ideal. Um, so this one, um, because of the, the aircon latch, I will go for something that is this. I will go for these two units. Stack 2 and 11, this I would think that it will be more attractively priced as compared to the ones that is facing outside full full but this one will get a quite a full view as well because the angle is like this right you won't get blocked but whereas for here you might get a bit of blockage because of here yeah but for here easily you have already cleared this part stack 2 and 11 higher floor units are the one that i will go for if they adopt the same pricing strategy as uh, lake gardens yeah, because it's a marginal 0.35%. So these are the possible numbers that you probably want to remember when you go for the uh, balloting. So the lower floor was 4.67%, if I never remember wrongly, let's recap. Yeah, correct, 4.67%. So I won't go for down, up. I will go up, down. Next, I'll be talking about the 3 and the 3 plus study in Sora itself. So I'll be taking examples from two different projects uh, for you to better understand if it's worth again to buy a view or something that is non-view facing. 
Okay, so again, back to Prince Bar Gardens and Alex Residence. 17 minutes for MRT, 3 minutes for MRT. So both the selling point of these two projects are different. Okay, so of course for Prince Bar Garden is 80% communal space. So you walk in with a wow feeling, everything is airy. Whereas for here, it's a bit more compact, but it's three minutes to MRT. Okay, then I will be showing you these two projects, the three bedroom, the performance. Okay, so for Alex Residence, right, 1044 square feet, 33 uh, level, stack 6, so and profit for 354k whereas for principal garden it's level 24 stack 14 1076 square feet and profit 664k okay so being like maybe 30 square feet more their profit is actually 87 percent more which is about close to 310,000. A lot of buyers, we buy properties, we look at MRT, of course it's important. I won't say it's not important, I will say it's important as well. But like if you look at two different projects, right? From here, we clearly see that this buyer has clearly buy into the selling point of the project. So even if it's not close to MRT, they bought principal gardens and when they resell it in the future, the buyers when they come in, not all buyers, they are looking for something that is close to MRT. So they come in, but they feel that they have a good, feel good factor. They come in, they wow, you know, they see the pool is huge. Um, the communal area is big, it's airy, it's bright. Most of the units there are very bright actually. Um, so they come in, they have a different feeling. Then of course, they are willing to pay a bit more. So Next, I will be sharing this project in uh, D5, which is called Twin View. So Twin View, they have two facings. So the three bedroom, stack 10, is facing Park Rivera and AYE, which is here. Whereas for stack 15, stack 15 is facing the Pandan Reservoir. Let me show you the view first. So uh, for the 1055 square feet unit, twin view facing Park Rivera and AYE. And then for this stack 15, it's facing the Pandan Reservoir. So actually every morning you get to wake up to like this water, it's very calming. It's not like, uh, whereas for here it's... I mean of course, uh, the AYE is slightly further away because it's blocked by Park Rivera already. But still, you know, uh, if you compare two views, this one will definitely be uh, a bit nicer like definitely because you wake up to the waters every morning and it's an unblocked view. Here you can probably see some sunset or whatever. Yeah, so if you look at how they have performed, so the one floor higher, stack 10, which is facing A, Y, E and Park Rivera. Then this is stack 15 that is facing the reservoir. So if you look at the profits today, 1055 billion 1066. AYE1 earned 174k. Whereas for the uh, Pana Reservoir one, they earned 342k. So it's 168,000 more in difference. Even when they were purchased 5% higher in price. What I'm trying to derive here is developer might price the lake facing a bit higher. So we of course we need to understand at which point is it still worthwhile entering. Okay, so all the three bedrooms are lake facing. So when all, all of them are lake facing, then I think the next thing we need to compare will be the layout. Okay, so basically there is five different kind of layouts in Sora itself for the three and the three bus study. Okay, so the smallest one will be the three deluxe with 936 square feet. Okay, at stack 4 and 9, it's also facing the lake. Okay, so the main thing I want to highlight is, I will say the pros first. Okay, the pros is that at least it's still a tuck kitchen. There are some layouts that I see 936 are the open concept kind of kitchen. At least this is still tuck kitchen. Okay, and then uh, it comes with a... a window panel over here so it won't be dark for the kitchen but the only 
not so good thing is the cons will be there is no window so when you do heavy cooking it might be a, a slight issue okay another thing um, talking about back to the pros is that with a 936 it still comes with a flexi meaning to say that this can be a study it can be a storeroom it can be a helper's room or whatever you have to just enclose this up okay but if you don't want it you can also hack this away if you don't need a store or whatever but I, I doubt it because usually for three bedrooms there's family and then you might need a store to store your luggages etc okay um, and another pros so this is one pro two pro this is the third one third one I would say is that the wardrobe is in then in so it's not protruding out normally it's here right then you enter you see the wardrobe but this is in then in so which means to say that the room it's quite spacious so if you want to put your vanity here it's also still possible uh, or you want to shift the bit over here you want to put your vanity here it's also possible when there is more space there is more room for configuration okay uh, so now we go to the cons the cons will be number one will be no windows in the kitchen number two I think this bath is a bit too small and it's like this so you have a shower area here so uh, it's like a t-shape uh, so it's not like the normal kind of uh, bath that we're talking about so this is the second one which is the toilet and then the third one will be because of the AC latch this is half window so meaning you say that half wall half window so having a lake but yet you only have half a window it is not so ideal to be honest so this is something that you might want to take note I'm not saying that this deck cannot buy but I'm just saying that it didn't play to the fullest of the selling point of this project which is the lake okay so next thing we will go to the three bed premium so this three bed premium is 1098 square feet with 112 14 and 27 facing the lake so I will talk about the pros first comes with a home shelter, a yard and a wash closet and the wash closet comes with a window so this is something quite important and all the toilets come with window which I think is quite uh, essential like I've mentioned in the two bedroom earlier and of course most importantly uh, it comes with an indent uh, wardrobe as well so this developer is nice I think they have cleverly built these wardrobes in indent words so that you have more space here and then you can still have your vanity side yeah so definitely there's sufficient space if you don't need a vanity then I think this can be your OSIN chair or whatsoever there's lots of space and then the good thing about this layout is also this yeah the Chinese always call this Xuan Guan so it's like an L shape um, so feng shui wise is, is quite ideal because if you don't get your direct access like this and of course privacy wise you're not compromised because neighbors can't look into your unit next we will talk about the three premium study which is 84 units okay then we have 1152 square feet 1163 and 1195 so we zoom in to each of the individual units first huh? so basically all three are facing the lake talk about the first one first comes with a study and a window so this is the first con again it's also in then wardrobe also comes with a wash closet uh, and window but the cons will be this toilet doesn't have a window okay and then something to note is a smaller walkway here shorter as compared to here same thing for the 1163 square feet uh, window no window window for the study window for the master but it's longer so in terms of uh, space wise actually the space is actually going into here I think then whereas for this layout is slightly different because if you notice both of this layout the, the 1152 and the 1163 square feet right the study is in between the master toilet and the common bath so basically even if you want to hack 
it will just be creating another bigger toilet or a bigger space I don't know for what uh, but this one for sure you will want to keep it okay but whereas for this this layout is slightly different 1195 square feet stack 3 and stack 10 facing the lake okay so if you notice right this one this the layout is actually with the study not in between here whereas for this is different this is actually here right so this is not this is beside the living room so you still have a home shelter wash closet okay but wash closet doesn't come with window but two of the bath comes with window and i think i want to touch on this is that this study right that is beside the living room i think it's very very rare to see something like this and uh, it's very ideal because if let's say i'm a buyer that needs a study space then i will keep this study room keep but if i don't need the study space i can make it into a white frontage living room white frontage so i think it's quite ideal because when you go into a living room that is white frontage it's very different the feel is very different as well as compared to the normal portrait one so I think it's versatile, so meaning to say that when you want to sell in the future, resell value-wise, you will attract a bigger pool of buyers. I will attract those buyers that need a study and I will also attract buyers that need a bigger space in terms of the living room because this is hackable. Another point I want to note is that if you look at here, right, most of the bedroom in the three bedrooms is just L so they have this little panel over here L these two layouts are the same but we go to the 1195 square feet one eh? we will see L plus one more window over here you can likely put your TV here or your bed here and then TV here it's, it's versatile so when you have two windows over here these are layouts that we seldom see in OCR region so all this we see in probably Asia or even CCR regions, then we see something like this because actually to be honest, it is cheaper to create this whole thing as a wall. But the developer actually create this as a window and then uh, another window, which gives the room a lot of view, a lot of light and also very airy. Okay, so I think after seeing all this right, you will probably know what, what is my recommendation already. So selection wise, if it's super budget constrained, then I will consider this la. But if not uh, uh, budget constrained and yet um, needs a storeroom, then I will consider the C2, which is stack 1 and 12, which is these two stacks. Then if it's the no budget constraint, then I will consider C5, which is the 3 plus study and the one with the study room right beside the living room because you will have a lot of flexibility it's very rare and also versatile if i need a study i keep it if i don't need i want to have a bigger living space a white frontage living then i can create into that white frontage living and it's also facing the lake like i've mentioned all three bedrooms are facing the lake so they have basically hit most of the unique selling point of this development i would say so i would strongly feel that Stack 3 and 10 is something that we can consider if you don't have any budget constraints. Okay, so next I'll be talking about the 4 and 5 bedroom. So I will start with the 4 first, of course. Um, I think the 4 and 5 bedroom in this development is very rare because there is only 18 units. 18 units of 4 bedroom and 18 units of 5 bedroom. Okay, so basically it's all facing the lake. And it's on the... 20 storey block so first I will touch on the layout first okay so 1528 square feet set 25 facing the lake I think this is a very rare kind of layout it has just everything that fits in for what uh, most buyers are looking for number one it has a white frontage living so when you enter into the unit you will enter by the private lift okay so private lift already is rare and plus being in d22 
it is definitely makes it even more rare to have a private lift. Okay, so later I will share with you some stats to how many units in the whole of District 22 has this kind of private lift or this kind of layout. So if you are one of uh, a buyer that is considering uh, Sora, 4 beta or even 5 beta, I think it's uh, worth considering because that number one, this is just a rare piece. Um, 18 units in the development itself plus the supply which I will talk about later on. Okay, so I think the good thing about this layout is that um, the private lift right has a dual entrance. So you come in, you go into here, you can go into your living room. The another part is that, so they have this little door over here. Say for example, you buy a lot of groceries, you can go straight into the dry kitchen to unload them or go straight into the kitchen to unload them. Yeah, so um, this is just a little point uh, to note. And this also comes with a walk-in wardrobe so which makes the rooms very big so actually when i see layouts like this right i always say it's landed in the sky because they are very well contained and everything is just in there you have privacy you have a white frontage which if you have been to portrait versus white frontage the white frontage as you enter it's just full brightness and plus you just imagine the view when you yourself wake up to every morning or even your guest when they come. This is the lake view and the garden view. Full. Okay? And uh, because of the facing, it's right over here. Yeah, so you have the full greenery view and the lake view as well. Another thing I want to point out is that, is that they have a junior. So this is very ideal for multi-generation. A lot of times when you buy a 4 beta, um, if we have done some research or I have done my own research, um, those that doesn't come with a junior master don't profit as much. So I think this is ideal because it comes with a junior master. Okay, so this bedroom comes with a Jack and Jill toilet. Jack and Jill concept so you can share between this bedroom and, and this bedroom and this becomes an ensuite so basically you have a flexibility of having two ensuite toilets or uh, three in fact junior master and also this room so next I will be talking about the supply so a lot of times buyer ask me um, is it feasible to buy such a big unit in these districts like this or how will be my resale value be in the future? So I think I will be sharing on this part, okay? So the supply of four bedrooms in the whole of D22, 1,003 square feet with private lift. There are only 73 units in the whole of District 22. Basically, they are all not available for now because they are in Jaden and the gardens itself. Plus us, there will be another 18 of units that's available for sale in the future. So that makes it very rare and exclusive because if you want to have a unit that is above 1,003 and then with private lift, we can only go to these three projects. That means in the future when you want to sell, you don't have much competition, but you might have quite a bit of demand because when you have very little supply and then huge demand that is where your price shoots up. 5 beta. 4 beta already have my a bit of uh, doubts whether will any buyer buy from me in the future. What about 5 beta? Okay, so I'll be touching on the 5 beta. Okay, so the 5 beta is this stack also facing the lake. So layout wise this is stack 16 1679 square feet and same thing, white frontage living, huge white frontage living. This is 5.5 approximately. But when you go to the show flat, right, you will notice that this 5.5 is slightly wider than other 5.5. Okay, because I feel it that way. I've been to the show flat. When I see it, it's a bit different. Um, I've been to other show flats that are also 5.5, but I don't feel that wide. I think mainly it's because of the private lift and the 
a dry kitchen. So this whole area, some of the 5.5 right, is just here and then when you walked in into the unit, you will go straight into the room. So there is a cutout somehow, some parts. But whereas for here, this whole piece is like 5.5. Yeah, I, I'm not so sure if you get what I mean, but um, there is no um, cutout on any of the ends. So you will feel that when you enter into the room itself, right? When you enter the living room itself, you will feel that it's like, wow, there's space all over this whole area. So same thing, it's actually similar to the uh, four bedrooms layout. It's just that it comes with a small, one more bedroom here. And then um, also same, they have the, the another door over here that can load your groceries into the dry kitchen and also the wet kitchen. It also comes with a junior master. Master bedroom is super huge. And it comes with a long bath. This is something that is very rare because I've sold a few uh, bigger units before and then also landed. This is something that buyers will be looking for when they want to buy a bigger unit because like I've mentioned, landed for owners, even um, they want to buy a bigger unit owners, right? Like 5 beta, 4 beta, these are the things they want to look at. Bath and also a his and her sink, which is dual sink. And also most importantly, the walk-in uh, wardrobe. You know, these are the plus points. Okay, so these two bedrooms of course share the, the bath. So next thing I will be talking about will be the supply. So I think a lot of us are concerned if I were to buy, wow, such a huge unit, whether will I be able to resell in the future. Okay, let me show it to you. So basically, in the whole of District 22, there is only 18 units of 5 beta with private lift and that is Lake Gardens okay so plus us there will be a total of only 36 units in total yeah so um, the other older properties like uh, Lake Front, Lake View, Lake Grand they do have 5 beta but it doesn't come with private lift. So this makes it very very exclusive I would say. So when you are a buyer looking for a 5 beta and when you go to one that is without private lift and with private lift it does make a lot of difference. Okay so what happens when there is very little supply or rare? I will be taking some examples from Tampanese. So Tampanese is also a very established estate. Okay so um, a lot of people, like I've mentioned earlier, a lot of people ask me, Tampanese got people buy 5 beta man. But if you look right, in the whole of um, the, the Tampanese area, we only have Moderna, Manhattan, and East Point Green. So Moderna only has a 4 beta, Manhattan only has a 4 beta. If East Point Green, there is a 5 beta, that is TOP in 1998, 2314 square feet at only 8 units. It was only until Treasure at Tampanese came out in 2023 uh, when they TOP, the 5 beta came out with 1668 square feet of 110 units. But if we look at the property guru today, um, there are only a mere 10 to 11 percent that is for sale. 10 percent. So, which means to say, because these people they buy for their own stay. Not everybody wants to sell. That makes it very rare. So even if I have like 110 units, but there are only 10% of it, or 10% of the owners wants to sell it. Okay, so now if we look at the transactions uh, that has happened in Treasure Tampanese itself, the 5 beta Treasure Profits. Yeah? So we have uh, 1690 square feet, 1722, 1690. So they were purchased at 2.07 million, 1.924 in uh, 2020 and 2019. Now, if you look at the profits today, they are ranging between 500 to even like the highest one at 981,000, holding a mere 
three years and two months. Yeah, so basically, um, when you have only 110 plus the very li very minimal supply and and eight units of there is one one eight in the whole of Tampanese and only 10% is selling because the rest of the 90% is for own stay. This is the profit that we're looking at. This is the profit we're talking about because when it's rare, buyers are willing to pay more. Plus, this one has no private lift. So, how about one unit that has all the requirements and has a private lift? Makes it even more exclusive. This is definitely a rare piece, I would say. Then next thing I will also share about um, Marymount area. So Marymount area, Thompson area, all the projects over there. We have Marymount views, two, three, four bedrooms, two, three, four bedrooms, two, three, four bedrooms, two, three, four bedrooms. So basically, there is not much of five bedrooms. The only five bedrooms that is available in this area is Singming Plaza. And then until Jetscape came along. And TOP in 2023 with only 39 units. Okay, and then a uh, five bedroom at 2099 square feet. And plus, something we need to note is that there is a lot of landed in this area. Maybe for Tampanis, right, there isn't so much of a landed. Um, that is why the buyers they can't find any units in this area that is like this. So maybe that explains the price uh, or the profits that they have they have made. So, but what about the Marymount area? There are actually, in fact, many landed in this area. So, but if you look at today, right, Jade Skate profit, yeah, eight floor unit, 16 floor, 5th floor, 21 floor, all bought in 2020, 2020, 2018. So, today, purchase price, 3.428. I think a lot of us, maybe even back then, they were thinking, oh, 3.428 buying a five beta in the development it honestly doesn't make sense but if you look at the sale price today 4.55 million and the profit is 1.112 million so basically i came to derive that every area even there is landed in the area there are still people that want condo now that's number one number two is that um there are people that are willing to pay this price given that size and everything because there's a need, there's a requirement that they have. So like for Jetscape, there is only 39 units, right? Of uh, 5 beta. So basically when this one rare piece comes out, that is the profit that we are experiencing. Okay, so why, um, like I mentioned, there is a lot of uh, lender in this area. So if we talk about this, right, this uh, Pemimpin Terrace House 1680 square feet land size sold at 4.338 So actually the buyer that buy the Jetscape right buy at 4.55 million They could easily buy this at 4.338 but they didn't because the 4.338 is most of the time a rather old one and they also need to at least have one meal of uh, cash on hand for renovation Okay and 4.55, I can actually buy a freehold. Why do I want to buy a, even I, okay, even, let's say for example, I have 1 million, but not all buyers, I came to divide, not all buyers want um, to stay in the landed. Even this 30 Jalan Pintau, 2039 square feet, land size, freehold, so at 3.4 million. I mean, easily they can afford that. Even if you buy this 3.4 million, you pay 1 million of renovation. It's only 4.4 million. Then why don't buy this? So I think just one logic is that not all buyers want to stay in London. Some buyers, they just want to stay in the condo. Yeah, so that is why they are willing to pay um, 4.55 for a uh, this whole 99 years jet skip. Okay, so when supply is very low, demand is, even if it's not high, it's also equals to good profit. Two buyers looking for five beta, for example, you only have two buyers, look, 
in, in a year, you only have two buyers looking for a five beta and there's six months no supply and what? Just your one unit comes out of nowhere, uh, you decided to sell, what is going to happen? That two buyers might be coming to you bidding for the unit, you never know. Okay, so I've come to the end of my video. Once again, I'm Carissa. So if you have any um, questions or you have any uh, queries you have on the layout of this project or the facing, which one should I choose? Uh, which price point should I enter? Uh, or you need some advice on um, any other properties that you're looking at, please feel free to contact me on the number shown below. Um, and if you have any projects you want me to review in the future, you can DM me or drop me a text as well. Okay, so uh, that's all for today. Once again, I'm Carissa and I'll see you soon.